good morning. Glad to see you out this uh, new year. And uh, appreciate uh, all of you uh, uh, coming out today. Um, there's a lot of things sometimes on our heart that only the Lord knows about. That's pretty much what I got out of that song there. I understand that. But I like that line in there where he, sometimes it just knows between me and the Lord. And, uh, but he knows all of your cares. Amen. He knows everything about you, good and bad. Right. And the good thing about it this morning is he still loves us Amen. with a heart that he gives on Calvary Amen. for you and me. That's right. wonderful news yes. for a whole new year. And I appreciate you being here this morning. Uh, you do remember those that are on the prayer list. Uh, if you don't know, uh, uh, some Please, please be praying for uh, Brother Steve Hope and his family. Uh, he lost his parents, uh, I guess, yesterday. Uh, so uh, both of them. So if you hadn't heard, you uh, just just they need your prayers. Uh, but uh, also the other prayers. A uh, couple of um, announcements. Um, the deacons will meet today at 4:30, and uh, this coming Wednesday night they'll have a, a, a conference. Uh, so. Uh, uh, just remember that, um, but uh, uh, this morning I, I'm, I hope that you've had a good uh, a rest, a good Christmas, a good New Year, and uh, but uh, looking forward to what the Lord will do for us uh, this year. So uh, just appreciate uh, each one of you and love you. Uh, does anybody have a, a prayer request or anything this morning you'd like to share before we go further? Remember these families. Dwayne Simpson. <clears throat> Dwayne Simpson was in the hospital with pneumonia. Okay. Y'all remember that? Someone else? Well, I appreciate you this morning. Uh, uh, we're going to take up tithes and offerings, but uh, uh, we'll ask you gentlemen to come around at this time. We'll do that. While these boys are getting this done, uh, I forgot to announce one thing. If you'd like a printout of uh, your tithes and things throughout the year, uh, there's a sign-up sheet up here on the table if you just sign your name. Uh, Brother Jeff and Amy and them will get you a, a copy of that for this coming uh, tax season, okay? All right. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Brother Steve, would you? Dear Lord, we come to you this morning. Lord, thank you for this morning. I'm to come to church. I ask that you bless the church. Be with each one that come out this morning. I ask that you be with us through the song service. Be with Brother Davis and Franklin. Have the church in the morning. Be with us.
know there are many this week going through storms and trials and sometimes you don't know how you're going to make it through but God's there he provides a way he's there holding your hand if you would stand let's all fellowship in just a minute shake hands with the ministers and each one this morning Um, pretty much winter working in pediatrics doesn't work well for me, but um, a lot of times I want to sing and I can't, but this morning um, this song was on my heart. I've sang it many times before as all my songs, but um, this song you guys know well. Last night I watched a movie. I hadn't seen a movie in a long time, and <clears throat> I don't know if y'all are familiar with it. It's called The Shack. I've heard kind of back and forth on that, and I didn't really care to watch it, but I saw it last night, and um, it made me stop and think how good it's going to be that day when I get to see him face to face. I cannot wait. And while we're down here, we have a lot of questions questions come to mind and you think well I can't wait till I get up there I'm going to ask him about this but he let me know when you get up there it won't matter anymore and he may explain things but he may not because guess what we're not going to be sad up there anymore we're not going to have any heartaches and I'm so happy to think about that it just fills my soul there is coming a day when no heartache shall come no more clouds in the sky no more tears to dim the eyes all is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore what a day Glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, that one who saved me by his grace. And when he takes me by the hand, and leads me through that promised land what a day glorious day that will be there'll be no sorrow there and no more burdens to bear no more sickness no pain and no more parting over there and forever i will be with that one who died for me what a day glorious day that will be what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face that one who saved me by his grace and when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will 
There'll be no sorrow there And no more burdens to bear No more sickness, no pain And no more sorrow over there And forever I will be With that one who died for me What a day, glorious day That will be What a day that will be When my Jesus I shall see When I look upon his face The one who saved me by his grace And when he takes me by the hand And leads me through the promised land What a day, glorious day that will be What a day shall see and I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace and when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be Good morning. I hope uh, you mind the Lord this morning. That's right. I hadn't always been with the Lord no 45 years, but he's always been with me, and he's always been in that marriage. I turned my back on him many times, sir. He's never turned his back on me. But I thank God for everything he's done for me. Most of all, I thank God for Jesus Christ and his salvation. Amen. Bless you, John. Come on else. Surely. <laughs> and this is what the Lord Jesus said. In the world you will find tribulation. But he said, be of good cheer. I will come the world. world. Amen. And I will tell the news that nothing to you. Everything's no. bad. It'll get you down. And then I hear the Lord say, cheer up. You're not at home. That's right. That's right. I'll be at home with him. Forevermore. Until then, he'll take care of me, just like he did this morning, Elijah in the furnace. That's right. 
Amen. Amen. Bless your heart. Someone else. Man, come on out. Bless her heart. Come on out. Well, I appreciate what the Lord's already done this morning. Uh, I don't know how you feel second row back but the front row uh i felt pretty good with the songs and everything they sung today and just, uh i love that song he is here Whew. he's done been here he's everywhere if you'll just let him work in your life he'll be there uh, this morning uh with the lord's help i'll preach to you for a little while uh we'll be in uh, uh john chapter 20 I hope you've, uh, uh, I don't know how your year was last year, uh, but we've got a new year, new start. Uh, those things that were last year are behind. They're nothing but memories now. Uh, uh, but uh, I guess if I wanted to share anything with you today, uh, when we look at this couple of verses this morning, and I'm going to be going through some of the book of John, but... Uh, um, a lot of us here, I hope all of you, I, I, I don't know your heart, I, I hope that all of you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. But there's a difference between being saved and living for the Lord. And, and don't get me wrong, I, I'm eternally secure in going to heaven. It's not nothing I've done, not nothing you've done, but because of Jesus Christ's righteousness, that's why I'm going to heaven. That's the only reason I'm going to heaven. But for me to live a godly life, that is something that we choose to do. And, and the choices we make are always consequences. And I, I want to read a couple of verses this morning. We'll go to the Lord in prayer. And the Apostle John, that's basically what he's trying to get across uh, to people here in these two verses. And we're going to be in verse uh, 30 and 31 of chapter 20. And I, I want to read these two verses. Go to the Lord in prayer. And that's what's on uh, uh, John's heart. Uh, and uh, it's on mine. And I hope it's on yours. Uh, but uh, in verse 30 and 31 uh, of John 20 says, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through His name this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear, most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank You, Lord, for everything You've done this morning. And uh, Your presence already being here, we pray, God, that You'll just bless the remainder of the service, that everything we do, Lord, will just bring honor and glory to Your precious name. We ask, Lord, as You... Uh, uh, move this morning. We pray, God, you use me. Uh, just the things you put on my mind and my heart, Lord, as we look at your word. We pray, God, that you just see the goodness that you have for us and help us just to be 
uh, uh, workers for you, Lord, throughout this year, Lord, and continue to look for you to come any day. And we thank you, Lord, for your blessings. I ask today that your prayer be upon everything, Lord, that's done, and just uh, your word, and just uh, use me this morning. I ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. So this morning I want to talk to you a little bit about John here. Uh, uh, he, you know, he, he's, he's really trying to get across here a couple of things that is on his heart and his mind. We're going to be looking back. If you've got a pencil today, I'm not sure I'm going to read all the scriptures, but we'll go from a few chapters here uh, through this. And, and uh, the Apostle John, basically, uh, 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 he, he's wanting to get across a couple of things. Uh, he's wanting to convince them that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And, and, and uh, that's one thing for us, as I said earlier, to have it in our minds. But, but He needs to be the Lord of our lives. Uh, our actions, everything we do consists of Him. It's like a Sunday school teacher this morning shared, you shouldn't move just because you want to move. Uh, you should wait upon a voice to speak to you in your heart, in your mind about situations in your life, whether it's critical ones, whether who you're going to choose to get married, where you're going to live at, how many kids you're going to have, but just simple things. Whether or not you should buy this, not get that. Or the most critical ones is the ones where the Holy Spirit moves you and tries to get you to say, tell this one here that you love them and tell them about the Lord. Uh, uh, just share your, your testimony with them. Uh, that, those type of things that we have, to, we have to be close to Him. I've always said that. That's, that's the truth. Uh, you, can, you can tell. And that this is a whole new year. And you may not have done real well. I, I, sometimes I look at mine and I'm thinking, man, a lie. How many more times I'm going to skim my nose and bust my face on the ground? Uh, it's like year to year. It just seems like I can't get up. Uh, but, but the Lord, this is a new year. We've got a new star. And so uh, uh, everything is, you know, that's happened has happened. Uh, uh, but uh, in John 10, 10, Jesus speaks uh, of him coming again. And, and he, he's got eternal life. Uh, but he also wants us to have abundant life. And, and I want us to understand this year. To, uh, that you understand something in your life. You don't have to wait to get to heaven to accept everything that God's done for you. Do you understand that? I understand that one day when I go to heaven, uh, uh, I'll see the Lord Jesus Christ who died on Calvary for me. I'll see him as he is face to face. Uh, I, I'll behold the one that gave his life for me. That's, that's a done fact. But he has already blessed me in this life. And when he still pours out blessings upon me, I don't have to wait to get there. Even if he didn't bless you, none. Uh, eternal life is the greatest gift that has come into this world. And we have enough. If you never get another thing in your life, you have eternal life. You've got all you need this morning. But uh, 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 the Apostle John here, uh, uh, he goes through about seven different miracles. He, he, he says in these two verses I read to you today that even if he could write everything down, there's not everything been told about what he has uh, seen and done, but he focuses on about seven different things, uh, miracles here in the uh, uh, book of John. And we're going to look at some of them this morning. So the first one is found in chapter 2 of John. And uh, uh, verses 1 through 11, and for sake of time today, I'm not going to read all the scriptures. I'm going to tell you the scriptures. You've got some homework this week. Uh, you can read some and understand, but uh, I can tell you about this. This is the first miracle that uh, uh, the Lord Jesus did, and he does it in a little place called Cana. Uh, uh, Cana land and uh, uh, he, he is there and he's present uh, he has went to a marriage uh, and he uh, uh, his mother is there uh, she's been cordially invited uh, not by Jesus himself probably because he says woman what have you got to uh, do with me my hour is not yet come but uh, uh, the as they would do the RSVPs uh, she got a RSVP to come to this wedding, and and, and we know this, and we see that uh, that uh, Jesus here, he uh, 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 he intercedes here, and he he takes some water and some pots, and uh, uh, basically turns it into wine because they have run out of wine. Now, before I go any further, uh, uh, 
It's one thing, you know, uh, my son got married. Some of y'all, uh, you know, you were old enough. Some of them got married. And that time, some of you are hoping they'll get married uh, uh, someday where they can move on out. <laughs> uh, but the point of it is, is uh, how would you like to plan your little banquet, your little meal after the thing, uh, you know, after the wedding? And uh, uh, you've got something going on there. And uh, us just say you sent one to Mount Carmel to invite people to come to your wedding. And you sent them out to your families and friends, and uh, you sent it to the church that the bride's at, and uh, say the groom was here at Mount Carmel, and, and uh, uh, the, we just don't RSVP back. I mean, it's just one invitation to the whole church. Oh, you know that your family and friends are going to get there. You're going to have probably 100, 125 people there. Nice, pretty nice wedding. Uh, got you a place set up for everything, and the things are coming in, but you don't know whether or not, how many's coming from Mount Carmel? You don't know if there's going to be 10 there, 50, or all of us, 150 more. What the problem is here is uh, uh, they, they have got this, and this would be a, a, a sad situation showing that you, it would be an embarrassment. That they couldn't provide everything. So what we see here, here is, is uh, that Jesus prevents an embarrassment of the family not being able to provide the wine and the, the guests attending the things they need. And we see that in our lives, you know, that he provides everything that we need. Uh, but the second thing is Jesus makes the occasion even more joyful uh, because of the situation that uh, uh, he gives them. And the third thing is that Jesus demonstrates his power over nature. We talk about that some in Sunday school. Do you know that the Lord, he's over everything? He ain't just over angels. He just ain't over uh, the wind. He's over everything. He's over you and I. I I'm waiting to a day I, uh, as much as I struggle, maybe from day to day or maybe how easy it goes, but there'll be a day come that whenever he calls my name, that's the end of it. I, there, all the fight I might have in me to fight another day is the end. Because I don't have enough to stand against his voice. He giveth life, he taketh life. He is life this morning. Uh, if you don't have Jesus Christ, you don't have life. You have life physically, but you don't have spiritual life. And we need to have spiritual life because, of the, as they said in the testimony, this life uh, is all but most miserable. What the, we are facing by choice of where we're going uh, and to spend eternity. But we see that, that uh, Jesus intercedes and uh, he goes for these things and he does this. And, and we can always understand that uh, uh, the beginning of life and the latter in a life can be no more joyful than the start. Uh, simply because Christ is in it. And that's what you see here at this marriage supper uh, or this marriage feast uh, where he's giving out this wine. Uh, uh, they had a greater wine than they did at the start. You say, well, you're not supposed to drink. I'm not saying that. I'm saying this is probably grape juice. I I'm telling you that it's just a provision. It'd be just like you doing. Uh, how many people coming? We need about 25 plates of chicken fingers and about 45 plates of french fries. And if you ain't got it all planned out, you ain't going to have it all. Uh, but the Lord provides. He's saying at the end it can be better than the start. And I hope that your life, and if you look back on it, you understand that. The greatest thing that ever happened to me when I was 12 or 13 years old was to go to an old-fashioned altar and uh, cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ and tell him that I was lost and dying going to hell. He already knew that. Uh, but I, I, I said I need a Savior. And that's what is the better part of it is today. I live for the Lord. I try to. And you try to. But it's better today than it was at the start. It's a lot like telling you hear a lot of older folks went married. Uh, I love her more today than I did at the beginning. Uh, they said been married 45 years, 50, 55. Uh, if the Lord allows you to live that long together, uh, it's just something sweeter about it. That's the way it should be with Christ. Uh, you should know him by everything about him. Uh, somebody, you, you, you should know what uh, uh, he likes, uh, uh, what he doesn't like. Uh, it's just like spending time with your wife or your husband. 
Uh, you should know one another. And that, and that increases. And that's the way we need to be with the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Uh, we see here uh, this morning that he is in control of all situations. But we also know that uh, he, uh, uh, in the uh, 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 nobleman's son uh, uh, found in John uh, 4 that we know that uh, uh, this nobleman's son that uh, another thing that doesn't prevent the Lord is distance. Uh, the Lord can uh, conquer everything. He was here and is here this morning. Uh, 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 even though he's in heaven, uh, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Distance has no variable on him. Uh, he is able to do that. When, when you see the nobleman's son healed, uh, you know that, uh, let me tell you something, he was 20 miles away when that daddy come and asked him to uh, 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 heal his son. Uh, he was 20 miles away, and it, as soon as the Lord spoke it, it began. Healing took place. Uh, the Lord is able to do these things. Uh, he has the power over disease. He has the power over our lives. Uh, he has the power over distance. Uh, he is our all in all. If we would only just allow him to work in our lives. Uh, you, you see the compassion that he has uh, for this uh, nobleman. Uh, we, we pray God uh, that for his son. Uh, we pray for uh, people on our prayer list here at Mount Carmel, uh, people that have lost loved ones, uh, 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 maybe last year, uh, maybe it's been four or five years, uh, there's still an emptiness there. Uh, that emptiness, I don't believe, will ever go away. Uh, it, there's just a spot there, uh, but God knows it. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ knows compassion uh, more than you and I know it. And, uh, and I hope that we have a lot of compassion in our hearts to share with one another. Uh, because uh, it's like she said this morning, it's by the grace of God uh, that my family's still here. Uh, uh, if I live throughout this year, it's because of the grace of God allowed it to happen. Uh, uh, the devil is here to steal uh, and to uh, uh, destroy and to take away and he'll snatch you out uh, as quick as the Lord a blink if it wasn't for his grace this morning. Uh, so the Lord is here and he can be your all in all. Uh, but we've got to be willing to listen this morning, to hear his voice, uh, uh, to uh, move when he says to move. Uh, this morning, uh, the third time or the third miracle we see uh, is in chapter 5 uh, this morning. Uh, verses 1 through 6 uh, talks about a man uh, a lame uh, from uh, uh, his birth uh, at a at a pool of Asazia uh, that uh, 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 he, he, he comes in and he says, uh, uh, there's uh, five porches there and uh, there's a little pool there and uh, every once in a while uh, uh, the Lord would send an angel down there to ripple the water and the uh, first one that got in it uh, got his leg stretched out where he could walk or whatever infirmity he had uh, was able to be healed. Uh, but this man uh, uh, here, uh, the Lord come to him and he, see, he went on and I, I really want to point out a couple of things here in verse, uh, verse 6. Uh, and a lot of us sometimes are in this place. Uh, then when I read this this week, uh, it said when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Will thou be made whole? I want to ask you today, Last year, whatever situations you had going in on in your life, are you ready to get out of that situation and get closer to the Lord? Or are you going to waller around in the same thing for another year? Because what's happening here is this man, he had to be asked a question. He had to be asked, do you want to be made whole? He was sitting there for probably 25, 30, 
35 years in the same old situation. No leg. Broke here. I can't get down and get in the water. Nobody's going to help me. I can't get down in there. But he was content to a, to a place. And I'm asking you, are you content? I hope you're not when it comes to being close to the Lord. Uh, he wants to pull us all we ready as a church, as an individual person, want to move closer to the Lord. He's all you've got to do is have a desire. Do you know that? That man couldn't get in that water. He still had the same situation going on, but he met the one and the God of sin who he needs to to get you where you need to be at. But you've got to have a desire. Uh, the, the, today and this year to be closer to the Lord. He will send that. Oh, uh, That's an absolute promise. If Jesus Christ himself has to step out of glory and come to your house and knock on your door and, and present his, uh, the gospel to you in a new way so that it'll draw you, he'll do it. Uh, he'll send what you need. Uh, we've got to have the faith and the desire to draw and to pull. And we see that here uh, this morning. Uh, we see that a, a man was healed that was helpless, lonely, and poor. You ever been lonely? Might have even been poor once in a while. I don't know. Uh, 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 helpless? I'll tell you what. My heart just breaks for Steve. He's helpless. So he's he can stand and do everything, ain't got good health. Yeah, but I guarantee you he's helpless today. You ever been there? Just don't know what to do. Just helpless. And the Lord is so faithful to come by and to strengthen you, carry you, pick you up, whatever the need is. And the Lord is my God and my Savior is Jesus Christ. What more can you desire in your life than that? And such a close relationship with Him this morning. It shows that, uh, again that Jesus has compassion for us and the totally helpless people. <clears throat> He talks about the widow woman. He talks about the fatherless. If you want to get the Lord's uh, uh, feathers ruffled, you do something to somebody, a widow woman, or somebody that's helpless. It, it is no light thing for, for uh, the Lord. He looks out over them. He takes care of them. He's going to take care of them uh, because they can't t uh, have nobody there to, to rely on. Uh, the Lord is going to be faithful there this morning. The fourth time we see the Lord uh, in the Gospel of uh, uh, John is uh, chapter 6. And uh, he is uh, feeding the 5,000. And uh, uh, he talks about here uh, in this chapter, uh, the first 14 verses, he talks about uh, that the men sat down, which was about 5,000. And we talk about this young man that brought his lunch. His mama packed his lunch for him. And the Lord just uh, used that to feed uh, those people uh, there. Uh, we see that Jesus concerned with those that suffer hunger. Uh, for us as a church, we need to be uh, uh, concerned with those uh, that suffer hunger. Uh, and I'm not just talking about physical hunger. Uh, this church should be a lighthouse. It should be set on a hill. Uh, if there's a person in Fort Payne, Alabama, they don't have something to eat, uh, they shouldn't hesitate to come to Mount Car uh, Carmel and to knock and ask for a loaf of bread and a pack of bologna and some mustard so they can have a sandwich. Uh, but it also should be a lighthouse uh, for a lost and dying world. Uh, uh, to feed the hungry spiritually 
Oh, whether or not it's Sunday school teachers. Oh, whether or not it's preaching. Oh, whether or not, whatever it is in your life, you should be able to share the gospel that the Lord has done for you. You don't have to be called to preach. The best preaching and the best uh, in life is your testimony. You got, you're got. you unique. Oh, you're the only one that God has brought out of a place uh, 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 such as you were in. Uh, mine is the same. Uh, you, we're all brought out of sin. But the manner that we're brought out of it is only unique to you and I. Uh, between us and the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Uh, so we need to uh, be feeding those uh, that need fed. The fifth time uh, is in the, uh, uh, still in chapter 6. And uh, uh, the Lord is walking on the sea. Uh, found in verses 15 through 21. And we see that uh, he has decided to be alone. He goes up into a mountain. Uh, the disciples get into a boat uh, going across the sea and the Lord starts walking to them. And uh, uh, we see here that uh, it is natural, folks, to be scared, to be fearful. That's a normal human aspect of life. Uh, my wife's scared of heights. Uh, I know I'm not too fond of snakes. Uh, you know, uh, there's different things in each of our lives that we're afraid of. Uh, I would say that all of us would be a little terrified if we were out on a boat and see somebody walking across the water on top of it. Uh, they, uh, but the Lord takes away those fears. Uh, we see here that uh, He demonstrates His po uh, power over nature again. Uh, he is walking on the water. Uh, he, he's over the uh, uh, takes away our fear. Uh, he, he says here in verse, uh, I believe it's 20, that said, it's, 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 it's I, be not afraid. Uh, you know, we, we get in those situations in our life uh, that, that, that we don't know what to do, we're scared. Uh, well, that's why I say it's so important to live as close to the Lord as we can uh, so we can hear that still small voice. Uh, we can hear him say, I, I know you're scared, but I'm here. Be not fearful. Uh, I'm here. In other words, I've got it. I, I'm, and you know, that's, that's a lot of, that takes away fear. It just does. Why? Because it's just like your mom and dad. You know, when you're uh, little, your mom and daddy would say, uh, you know, I'm right here. Well, all of a sudden, you got a little pipe up. You can stand up straight. Uh, Mom and Daddy's back there. I'm all right. Uh, you know, and that's the same way it is with the Lord. Uh, he takes away that fear that we have in our lives uh, this morning. So, in the sixth time of uh, the seven, he, he, he sees here, and it's a whole chapter of nine, uh, uh, John chapter 9. Uh, we see a man here that's blind from his birth. Uh, you know, and uh, he speaks of, uh, uh, the Lord healing this man. Uh, and uh, we know that uh, 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 the man goes before uh, uh, the Pharisees and uh, uh, gets questioned by them quite a bit. They call out his mom and dad and said he's old enough, ask him. Uh, but uh, I, I want us to see a couple of things uh, that Jesus is the light of the world. Do you know that? You were once in, and I was and you were. We were blind and could not see. Uh, we were in sin's darkness. And, light, and the light, the true light, Jesus Christ shined in our life. He shined in our heart and shined that light down in there. And, and, and we become awakened and knew that we were sinners and cried out to the Lord. And now He still comes in and shines a light down in them crevices. I've often said, you know, uh, some of you ladies wouldn't want me to maybe come to your house sometimes. Uh, especially if I uh, had a flashlight, uh, my wife would probably, uh, uh, if she, she likes to know two or three days before we got uh, anything going on. You know why? Over there behind the bookshelf in the corner, it ain't been cleaned out for a week. There's a cobweb over in there. Now here in the main floor, it looks good. It's shiny. But she just don't do a 
We call it spring cleaning a couple of times a year. That's the way the Lord is with our hearts. You know what? Out here in the main part and everything, oh, it looks good. Oh, he's got it cleaned up. You're going to church every week, attending Sunday school, uh, reading your Bible, praying. Oh, but what about this over here in this back corner right here? There's a cobweb back over in there. There's an old black spot back over there. It ain't been cleaned out in a year and a half. There's a junk down in there that uh, you and I don't even know what's down in there. He said, I need to get that out of there. I need to pull up, out, out, get that up out of there. I need to pull that up. You say, well, Lord, I, 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 I got that cabinet in front of it. Ain't nobody going to see it. It's just, you know, just between me and you, I, I mean, I know it's there a little bit, but hey, I, got, I keep the front bookshelf looking good. Lord looks back over in there and says, let me clean you up. That's what I'm talking about for this year. Just say, Lord, here I am. Get over in here in this place where you ain't been in a while. Oh, the joy that comes in your heart when you let him work and get that junk out of there. You, you, the Lord just lifts you up, blesses you again. You say, well, I never did experience that before. How, how close I feel to the Lord. That's exactly what he was wanting to do. He wants to bless us. He wants to bless us as a nation, as a people, as a church, as individuals, as families. But we've got to be open with him. And allow him to see that. And we're blind like that and we can't see but, and it's the same process with us. Because I want to point out uh, just a few things real quickly that, uh, 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 that uh, this man had to do in the in same thing that you and I do. So if you look, follow with me real quick in chapter 9, and we're going to go real quick, and I'm going to hit about three verses here, and we're going to look at verse 11 beginning with. Now this is a blind man, and he's speaking to them uh, about the, the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, he answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Salaam and wash. And I went and washed and received my sight. Now, go to verse 17. They, uh, verse 17 says, they say unto the blind man again, what sayest thou of him that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, he is a prophet. Now there's one more time here in, a, I believe it's verses 35 through 38. He says, Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto them, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and is he that talketh with thee? And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. There's a process in life. We see it all the time. There's a process in your life. There's a process in my life. I understood who the Lord Jesus Christ was when I was a little kid going to BBSs and attending Sunday school. He is a man. He is a man. That's just like this blind man was. I got up a little older and I understood that he was the son of God, so to speak, uh, as, the, as the preachers would preach to me. And I understood that he was a prophet. But when he become, uh, as I shared a while ago, I was 12 or 13 years old, he become my savior. He is the son of God. How do I know that? It is a process from a man to a prophet to he is my Jesus today. He is my Lord and Savior, and I want Him to be your Lord and Savior. I want Him to have your heart, but I want us to be willing to share and say, Here I am, Lord. I want to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. This is my life. He wants your life. Uh, he wants you to be a witness to Him. And this morning, so we see this, we see the process of this blind man, but we also see in the last us time here the seventh miracle we see Jesus raising Lazarus and this is found in a chapter 11 of John and we know this uh, that uh, that uh, uh, they sent someone out to the Lord and told him that Lazarus was sick and uh, uh, he needed to come uh, he tarried 
about two to three days. Uh, uh, started on his way, and by the time he got there, Lazarus was dead. He wanted to make sure, folks, that everybody understood who he was, that he is the Son of God. Because if you read any or studied any history of Bible history or anything, Israel, the Jew, believed that if a person died, the spirit of that person would hang around that body for two to three days. So if he showed up early, they would say, well, his spirit just come back. No, he wanted to make sure that this guy, they said he is dead, he is dead. Uh, they had wound him up, wound him up rather, and put him in a tomb. And we know the Lord called upon that, told him to roll the stone away and for him to come out. What we see here is a few things and what John is trying to get across to us. That Jesus has sympathy for those who suffer grief and sorrow. Uh, those that lost loved ones, whatever that situation is, uh, the, the Lord knows that. He, ha he understands that. But by this miracle, the second thing, by this miracle, Jesus shows his power over life, dead, and the grave. And he is the res resurrection life. Uh, he is your resurrection. He is your life. If you don't have the Lord, you don't have life. If you don't have life, then you will be resurrected to eternal life. You will be a resurrected. They will give you a body, uh, but it will be fit and made for the eternity, for the, the depths of hell, uh, for fire and brimstone, uh, because you have denied to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And in so doing that, you will spend eternity separated from Him because of your choice. Not because the Lord didn't love you. Because God didn't love you. He has done all that He can do. He sent His Son to die on Calvary for you and I. This morning, uh, we have to understand and be fully convinced about who Christ is. Uh, that's what John was trying to get across to his people that he was writing to. That's what I'm trying to get across to you this morning. That we, uh, 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 we have Christ and, and individually uh, we have to have it in our hearts, in our souls. Uh, just not in our mind, but also in our whole being uh, this morning. Uh, we need to live this year not as if I'm going to die one day and go to eternity. But to live like this, I've come from eternity and I'm going to get to live now. Do you understand that? Bring that which is above, which is, is Jesus Christ, the power of the gospel, and allow it to inf infiltrate our, ourselves and we are uh, present with the Lord. Well, this morning, I've often said it like this. The difference between a saved person and a lost person is Jesus Christ. But for me that's being saved, uh, uh, all I have to do is walk through a door and I'm in eternity. Uh, for a person that's lost, he, he dies and he goes to hell, eternally separated from Christ. Uh, but this time, this year, we need to live under the power of the gospel and the Holy Spirit. Allow it to work in our heart. And allow it to move us where he wants to move us. And to allow him to speak to us as we read. And see, uh, let's just see what the Lord will do. Hey, I don't know what he'll do. But I know he can do all things. Uh, uh, but uh, as they prayed before Sunday school this morning, if we can all move the same direction, there's no telling what we're able to do. We've got to trust Him this morning. Do you know the Lord this morning? Do you understand the power that Christ has? Don't limit Him. Do not put Him in a box. Do not ever limit God. He is able to form the heavens and the earth by a word of His mouth. It come into being. Don't tell me that He's not able to work in your life and to change a situation. It's by, uh, we've got to get close enough to the Lord to where He can hear us 
and get him to move on our behalf. Uh, and we, if we have the heart of Christ, uh, the things that we will ask of him, he desires to do. Uh, so it's all on the same page. Uh, we just got to be there. This morning while Robert and them, and they come to the instruments uh, and uh, uh, play and sing this morning, where are you at? Is Christ your all in all? Oh, well, you're doing what God has called you to do. Only you can answer that. It's just like the song this morning I said when I got up here. Uh, it, it, it's uh, only him and I, he, he and I know this. There's situations in my life and, and the way my heart feels sometimes that it's just me and him that know that. And you, I hope that you've got that. Uh, in your life this morning. Oh, uh, sometimes there's things my wife don't understand. There's things that I don't understand about my wife. Uh, uh, whether she would have shared them with me or not. But God understands. Will you let him this year? It may be scary. But he's going to be there. I just shared it with you a while ago. He'll take the fear away. It really boils down, Brother Fred, faith. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. There's it. Do you believe this book? That's what faith is. What he said to do, just trust him this morning. While they sing, now you stand to your feet, please.